All right, uh, I have just about 10 o'clock and I'd like to welcome the girls that are joining us online. I'm glad you stopped by or scrolled by. So hang tight for just a second. We're gonna be studying in Haggai. This is our third week together and we're gonna be studying in Haggai chapter two. We are going through uh, God's word, but we're also using the book entitled, The God That Comes Near. Uh, I'd love for you to grab that and walk through our lesson with us today. We're gonna do a wrap up and then I'm gonna give you a challenge at the end. I, Actually, we're gonna see, and you'll have this on your handout, so if you're online, you can download this. We're gonna see today that in Haggai chapter two, there are three questions, there are four declarations, and there is a promise. And I believe those things are in play for us today, not only in our life circumstances, but in the life of our church, in the life of our culture, what's going on in our culture. We were called for such a time as this and for things that are happening on the divine timeline, which we've seen through the overturning of, of Roe versus Wade, that, those things happened in, in that 50 year period of time that happened on our watch, that happened on our timeline. So as we're studying through Haggai, I don't want us to miss the main thing that the Lord is going for. And that's not so much to build, to rebuild the temple, to return and rebuild. That's definitely a part of it. But the main thing that he is going for is a change in their heart. The Bible says in 2 Chronicles 16, 9, that the eyes of the Lord search the whole earth in order to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to him. That was part of the problem of the people in Haggai's day. They loved the Lord, that wasn't in question, but their hearts were not fully, or another translation says wholeheartedly devoted and committed to him. The Bible also says that the enemy runs to and fro throughout the whole earth, seeking whom he might devour. John 10.10 10 says that the thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy. That's relationships, that's families. We were just talking about the breakdown, the escalation of the breakdown of the family. We were just talking about that. He comes to kill, steal, and destroy. That verse goes on to say that the Lord has come to bring life, that you might have life and have it abundantly. And Haggai will walk us through exactly <clears throat> how we can do that. So here's where we left off last, last week, if you'll remember from Haggai chapter one. <clears throat> we left off with God. I love this part. I just had not seen this in scripture before. How God sparked the enthusiasm. Do you remember that? You better shake your head like this. I'm gonna reteach the whole thing. Okay. So uh, remember I, I had shared a little bit about, I, I needed that spark of enthusiasm and that morning the Lord gave me that spark of enthusiasm and I have not gotten over that yet, but, but the Lord had sparked their enthusiasm. So think of what that might mean, how, how he motivated them, how he, uh, one translation says he stirred them up. He stirred their spirit. And so they're now getting excited and momentum is building for what the Lord has asked them to do to, to return and rebuild the temple. So he sparked their enthusiasm. So it's a great lesson on how to get your spark back. Uh, they returned to the work uh, that the Lord had given them and they lived happily ever after, right? <clears throat> yeah, not so fast. We get to chapter two. And it made me think last night when I was uh, here at... Uh, I love America, which you, if you are joining us online, it's a great patriotic service and uh, honoring the Lord and giving his word through songs was amazing. But we sang, made me think about this last night. We sang a song, Hallelujah, Thine the Glory. Do you want one of those sentences, one of those, one of those um, lines in Hallelujah, Thine the Glory is, may each soul be rekindled with the fire from above. You remember that? May each soul be rekindled with fire from above. That's what happened in Haggai. That's what he's talking about. He sparked their enthusiasm. He rekindled that fire that was in them. And I hope that he is doing that in you right now and over these days. <clears throat> so what happened to the spark? Did the spark ignite? Was that spark fanned into a flame? We're about to see, but let me just say this. Um, I'm weird, uh, I, I'm all kinds of levels of weird from different times, but I am and I recognize that and I apologize for that a lot of times. <clears throat> but what you might not know about me 
is that I love a good fire. My family laughs at me. They have called me a pyromaniac. That's someone who just loves fire. I love to arrange the wood. I love to get everything ready. I love to uh, have a fire. I love to enjoy what I have built in a way. And I want you to know what the Bible says about that. And we're gonna get to this spark. I think, let me, I hadn't planned to share this, but I think it's in Isaiah 59, maybe. Let me, I wanna, I wanna share this with you for just a second, I think. It's about when we build our own fires. I'm not looking at the, oh yeah, here it is, here it is. Uh, this is not usually the Bible that I study with. <clears throat> so think of this in light of a spark, a fire, like a fire in a fire pit. This has happened to me. The Bible says this, this is Isaiah chapter 50, verse 10. Who among you fears the Lord and obeys his servant? If you are walking in darkness without a ray of light, trust in the Lord and rely on your God. Verse 11, but watch out you who live by the light of your own fire. Yeah, I thought the same thing. Watch out those who, another translation says, live your own light and warm yourself by your own fire. This is the reward you will receive from me. You will soon lie down in great torment. What does it mean to walk by the light of your own fire? I want you to think about that. I want you to be thinking about that when you share in group time. But it has to do with the Lord starting a spark, uh, sparking the enthusiasm and how to ignite that. And for us to be careful that when the Lord lights something in our life, that we don't build our own thing as a result. Like I often do when I'm building my fire. I don't like people to help me. I don't like my husband, the two disciples. I want to arrange the wood in a certain way. I like to fan it myself and I like to walk around with this attitude of, I have created a thing here that I love. And I am enjoying what I created only to hear the Lord say, caution, you better watch out if you warm yourself by your own fire because the Lord is trying to build something here. So, so what did they do? I like arranging those things and uh, throwing a good cup of gasoline on there every now and then. So, but um, don't tell our, previ- our pastor who's a previous fireman, he, he will totally be appalled. <clears throat> Here, here's what I'm trying to say. When the Lord sparks something in your life, it's your job not to just stand there. Okay, you're welcome. It, when the Lord sparks some, when the spark is given to you, when a little bit of a fire uh, and he sparks your enthusiasm, your job is not to stand there, it's to get the gas can. I mean, I mean the fan, it's to get the fan going. Because the truth is there are a few things that you can do. When you just think practically about a fire, if you're building a fire, if there's a spark going on under that wood, there are about four things you can do. Uh, you can stand there and do nothing. You can look at the spark that the, let's just put this on the spiritual side. You can look at the spark that the Lord has started in your heart through the study of Haggai. You can stand there and look at it and what will happen? It will what? It's going away. It, it needs work. And if you don't do, if you just stand there, it's going out. Uh, I can pour water on it. There could be a spark there. And if I don't like that spark, I can pour water on it and it's going out careful what we pour water on. Another thing we can do is we can fan that spark into a flame. I like to do that with my paper plates and my cardboard boxes. I fan that into a flame or my favorite, throw a little gas. So it, I, I, like the big, I like the big flame. And I think that's what the Lord is going for. So let's read in chapter two and see what happens. Let me get back um, to Haggai. I turned over to Isaiah. Haggai chapter two. I'm gonna read several verses here. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. This message in chapter two comes about one month after the rebuilding had happened. He called the people back. They started to rebuild. And actually it was exactly 28 days. 28 days later, he gives this message from chapter two, which I find interesting. 
Because according to research and statistics, when we start something new, like a New Year's resolution in January, do you know by January 30th, about 80% of those resolutions have already been broken? They've not been completed. About 4% of New Year's resolutions are carried through by the end of the year, it is still in play. What you said you were gonna do on January 1st, only about 4% of the people finish those. So it felt like this is about, this is a good time. It takes about 21 days to get a a cycle of a habit, not so much a habit, but to get the cycle started. It takes about 21 days and here they are 28 days and they had begun to get discouraged. Um, They were focusing on something different. So let's look and see what that is. This is on October the 17th, I'll give you the date. Of the same year, the Lord sent another message through the prophet Haggai. Go on down for the sake of time, verse three. He says, as anyone remembering this house, he was talking about the the former temple that had been broken down. Does anyone remember it the way it was before? Because what was happening background is he knows they were remembering it because they were talking about it. And they were basically saying, this temple that we're working on right now, and this is why they were getting discouraged, this temple doesn't even compare to the previous temple, to Solomon's temple. This doesn't look anything like that. I don't even like, this is nothing. This is not, this is wimpy. This is no good. We don't like it. So the Lord calls them out on this. And he says, in comparison, how does it look to you now? And here, uh, is some of the declaration when he asked three questions. Here's here's one of the questions that he asked. Boy, this this stuck in my crawl. He said, it must seem like nothing at all. Another translation says, does it seem like nothing to you? He goes on to say, but take courage, take courage all you people still left in the land, says the Lord, take courage. So three times, He's telling them to take courage. All you people, all you people in this room, all you people online, take courage. When the Lord says that, that means that there was, a, there was a, some level of fear in place. Take courage and work for I'm with you, says the Lord Almighty, and my spirit remains among you. And let me just say, if the spirit of God is among you, there's nothing that you can't do that he's asking you to do. That is the main thing that we need is the spirit of God, God with us. We know, and we know this through revelation when he is, uh, Paul is sending messages and God is sending messages to the church that there, there was a church that the Lord wrote Ichabod, like my presence has departed. You're doing business as usual, but my presence is no longer there. One of the, one of the things that causes me <clears throat> more fear uh, regarding ministry that I think about all the time is what happened to Samson. The Lord had called Samson. The Lord had, Samson had been working for the Lord. And then because of his disobedience, because he started looking in a different direction, because he started doing his own thing, the Bible says that the, that the hand, that the spirit of the Lord had departed from him and he knew it not. So the main thing that we're, Uh, working for here and working toward is that the spirit of the Lord remains among us. And when we are obedient, he does. So he tells us to take courage and work for I'm with you, says the Lord. My spirit remains among you just as I promised when you came out of Egypt. So do not be afraid for this is what the Lord Almighty says. In just a little while, I will again shake the heavens and the earth. I will shake the oceans and the dry land too. And I will shake all the nations and the treasures of all the nations will come to this temple. And I will fill this place with glory, says the Lord Almighty. That is no small thing that we should take for granted. The silver is mine and the gold is mine, says the Lord Almighty. Verse nine is so important. The future glory of this temple or another translation, another translation, others say the present glory. So we're talking about this present temple. It's talking about the future because it hadn't quite been all the way built yet. The future glory of this temple will be greater than its past glory, says the Lord Almighty. And in this place, I will bring peace for I, the Lord God Almighty, have spoken. 
So we see three questions, four declarations, and a promise. The first question that he asked is, does it seem like nothing to you? What, what, basically what they were saying is, the Lord has asked us to do this, but this, this seems very insignificant to us. This does not seem important. We don't like this. We liked what we did before. So their eyes were looking in the wrong direction. They were looking at previous days. They were looking at the good old days. Do you know people like this? They walked to school uphill both ways. I mean, it was just the good old days, you know. And we look back and we, we forget sometimes, just like they had done before. The Israelites, you remember when they, had, when they were released from captivity and they crossed the Red Sea and when they were wandering in the wilderness, do you know what they said? We, we want to go back where we had leeks and garlic and we had uh, all these things that we, that we had to eat and they were naming those things. I'm going, excuse me? They were talking about the good old days back when we had leeks and garlic. Um, do you remember b- being beat by, a, by a, a, a slave owner that oppressed you? Do you remember building bricks with nothing but straw? Did you forget that they sold your children into slavery? But we look at things like the good old days. So, Careful where you fix your gaze. You will move toward what you are looking at. You will move toward what you are looking at. And if you are looking at things in the past and the way things used to be and what you liked and a personal preference, you'll start moving in the wrong direction. The Lord is not wanting you to look at what was in the past. Now he tells us oftentimes forget the past, forget what lies ahead, you know, but read, I mean, what lies behind, but look ahead. There are times he reminds us to look back and recall God's faithfulness. So we want to do that, but that's not what they were doing. They were, they were desiring to be at a different place. So they were not moving forward. They lost their spiritual vision. They did not see with eyes of faith because the temple was not built. They had just done the foundation in 28 days. They had barely laid the foundation. So they were getting discouraged and they did not see with eyes of faith. And I don't want us to be like that church. I want us to have eyes of faith to see the new thing that the Lord is doing in our life, in our country, in our communities, and in our church. I want us to to work on those priorities and work on our focus. Their focus here 28 days later, their focus had been misplaced just like their priorities had been misplaced in chapter one. So the Lord is realigning. He's bringing them back to center. Okay, I've got your priorities back lined up. You have returned. You've begun to rebuild. Okay, good. We're making progress. And before you know it, they're rebuilding, but their eyes are over here. Man, you remember the way it used to be? Man, I I, I wish we could do that again because this is nothing. And the Lord is saying, is this, is this like nothing to you? Like what I've asked you to do right here and now, is it like nothing? I, I have felt that way times in past, assignments that the Lord has given me. I didn't wanna do those. Felt like insignificant. But here's where they felt, here's what they failed to recognize. The purpose of this house that God had called them to build was not the same purpose that the Lord had for the previous house, for the former one. What the Lord is doing now is different. What he's doing now is different in your life. Things might look different. People might be gone. Things might feel different. So let's be sure that we sharpen our spiritual vision. Lord, help me see what you need me to see in this situation. So those were some questions. I I felt it a little sad from the Lord. He's like, is this this nothing to you? Is this nothing in your eyes? So he asked them questions and then there were four declarations that he made, we have read. Let me go back through, pick up the one in verse four. The Bible says this, um, take courage. He said that three different times, take courage. And verse four, he, uh, ASV, I like that. It says, yet now be strong. He is trying to move them from past reflection to present action. He reinforces it a second time and says, be strong. And a third time, all you people be strong. The reason that they can be strong is because the presence of the Lord is with them. Um, 
I would tell you, it was a funny little story. If we have time, I'll do it quickly. I, I love to do some gardening. And so one of my favorite things is to propagate hydrangea plants. I love doing that and seeing if I can uh, make new flowers and new colors. And I, I'm working hard on my hydrangeas. So I've learned the process to propagate them. And one way that you do that is you, you have to cut the leaves a certain way. And then you, you stick it in a, a smaller container. You put plastic over that little clipping that you did. And you put a rubber band around it, create this little terrain. Terrarium uh, effect, and you leave that plastic on that little tender shoot for 10 days. That's that's the protocol. You leave it on for 10 days. So I, I've been working with this one little plant, and, and I covered it with this little, it looks like a little plastic dome thing. And so 10 days came and went, and I took the plastic off, and that plant within 10 minutes wilted. Now, when I'm looking at it through the plastic, I'm going, oh, it's totally ready. It's healthy. It is, oh, it's happy. It's, it's bright and it's growing. I took the plastic off. Within 10 minutes, it started to wilt. So I put the plastic back on for two more days, kind of came back to life, got it sparked back, growing healthy, took the plastic off. 10 minutes, it's, it is wilted. Like, it's like, I'm dying. Stop. So I did it another two more days. And so now I'm researching and finding out what is the problem with this plant. And so if you leave that dome on too long, it makes the, the stems too tender. And like right now, especially with the humidity, it can't grow. So uh, yesterday I found myself talking to this plant. I had taken the dome off, the plastic off, and I said, okay, that's the last time. You're not getting this plastic back. So stop wimping out on me and be strong. Now I'm giving you every, I do, I talk to my plant. This is why my children don't come around anymore because I, I need something to nurture. So I'm not kidding. I can, I'm going to post a picture of my plant. I'll get John Mark to send it because it's wilted this morning. So it's in a little pink pot. It's all wilted. And I'm telling that plant, stop wimping out. I'm giving you everything that you need to be strong. Now get with the program. Start growing. I'm not going to put you back in that little protected plastic. You're going to grow. You're going to grow and I'm going to make sure of it. Sometimes we put ourselves in these little protected environments. My four, no more. These are my people. This is my class. This is my seat. This is where I sit. And I don't do anything outside of my little protected environment. May I suggest to you, those days are over. And we have to stop wimping out on the assignments that the Lord has given. It's time to grow. It's time to grow. The Lord has given you everything that you need to be strong. His presence is right with you. So the second declaration is this, verse four, work for I am with you. His presence was with them and with his presence comes his power. Everything that you need to be strong and to grow in the Lord. The third declaration is this found in verse five. My spirit remains with you. Do not be afraid. As the people gave willingly of their time and of their talent and of their treasure, as they worked obediently on building the Lord's house, he provided. Did you catch that? Did you read? He said, hey, everything is mine. The gold, the silver, I'm going to shake everything. Everything will be coming to this temple and the glory of the Lord will be here. He reminded them about, remember how I didn't bless you in chapter one because you were working on your own things. You were working so hard, but it it did not produce what you wanted because it was your own thing. But as you're working on what I have called you to do and that you are, that's what the Bible says, work for I'm with you. My spirit is with you. Don't be afraid. As they're working on those things, it comes with a promise to bless the work of their hand. The fourth declaration is found in uh, verse eight. The silver is mine, the gold is mine, and the future glory of this temple will be greater than the past. The fourth declaration is that God will provide. God will provide what's necessary to build this house. God will provide the strength for the people to do it, the time that they need, the talent, the skill, the wisdom. He will guide in all of those things. You can trust him. He has not thrown you into a place and said, figure it out. That's not how he works. He guides and then he provides. And then it comes with the promise 
uh, in chapter two, the Lord of hosts is mentioned five times. The Lord of hosts occurs five times emphasizing the Lord's authority. Apparently there's going to be a shakedown. Did you read all that? I'm gonna shake the land, I'm gonna shake the ocean. Uh, it's all mine. And he's reminding the people that I, sovereign God, am in control. I will be providing everything that you need. And then my favorite, verse nine, about the latter glory of this house will be greater. So see, there is no comparison to the way things were in the past. The Lord is granting peace in the present house, not the former house. He's granting peace in the present house. Verse 10 through 14 are instructions. We don't have time to unpack all of those, but 10 through 14 are instructions about holiness. It's instructions about repentance and blessing. And the Lord is reminding them, listen, there's nothing that you can do just because you're working on this holy temple. It's not gonna make you holy. He's reminding them, it's your actions that make you holy. Not, not because you touch a certain thing or don't touch a certain thing. Holiness is between me and you. Not some mandate, you have to do this and have to do that. So he's, he's lining that out in verse 15 through 19. The Lord calls them again to think carefully about their ways. Three times he says, consider your ways. That's how the whole book of Haggai started, consider your ways. And that's how he is wrapping back up. We're coming full circle. He explains the fact that their, their former disobedience had made them unclean and that the Lord through his mercy had made them clean again once they repented. And says from day forward, this is verse 19, I will bless you. I love this part. Um, let me pick up in uh, verse 19. I am giving you a promise. So here's our promise. Really, I guess we have two promises because the glory of the house will be greater. And here's another, I'm giving you a promise now while the seed is still in the barn, before you have harvested your grain, before the grapevine, the fig tree, the pomegranate and the olive trees have produced their crop. So before all of their harvest comes in, the Lord is saying, I have a promise for you. From this day onward, I will bless you. Not this day backward. This day forward, I will bless you. So what we know happened is that there was a spiritual renewal and that spark that he gave them was just about, it was just a flicker and just about to go out when Haggai comes back on the scene in chapter two and now he's given a strong word of encouragement, these promises from the Lord, these declarations from the Lord. And now that, that little spark is fanned into a flame and there is repentance and there is commitment. There is wholehearted devotion to complete the assignment from the Lord. And because of that, the Lord says, I will bless you. His blessing is coming because they came back and centered their lives, their priorities, their focus, their spiritual vision. They brought their heart back to the work that the Lord had called them to do. I love how this little book has encouraged me personally. It has changed the way I think about some things. It has changed my mindset and I hope it has done the same for you as well. I hope that even when you lay down and close your eyes at night, that you still hear me screaming at you, climb the hill and cut the wood, climb the hill and cut the wood. I, I hope you hear the verse of the, of the words of the Lord in chapter two, work. Work for I'm with you. This is going to bring blessing to you. Even before anything is produced, I am blessing it before one crop ever comes up. And then the book of Haggai closes with this final statement. I have specially chosen you. I, the Lord Almighty, have spoken. And I believe that's true of us today, that the Lord has chosen us for a space, for a time in history that is very important on the divine timeline. And I want us to get that right. I want us to work together. And, and I know this, that the presence, that the glory of the Lord is among us. His presence is with us. And he is granting peace in this house. I want you to be a part of that. Let's close in prayer. 
Father, I'm grateful today for your words of encouragement, for that little spark that you started. And thank you for just igniting that. And we begin to fan that into a flame and uh, that you would be glorified in the process. And thank you for blessing a people before their crops even came out uh, because of the change of their heart, you blessed uh, them and you blessed the work of your hand. Uh, bless the work of their hand in your house. And I pray that you will do that in our lives and in this place, this church and this country as well. In your name I pray, amen. Thank you girls for joining us online. I hope you'll be back next Tuesday as we start our study in Psalm 119.